it's Robert Moore once again. Little bait and switch here because this is about ink bubble abstract drawing or painting. And uh, I learned here, hopefully, from the last video I made that I need some more balanced light on this presentation. Uh, had a little bit of shadow on the bottom. Uh, now, I've made maybe 5,000 ink bubble abstract blowings, paintings, drawings. This is one, and there's no more satisfying act of creation than making an ink bubble abstract painting. And what we do is we start with a bowl of ink, soap, and water, and we have blowing tubes. We dip our tubes into the water, we blow, a bubble forms at the end of the tube, and you see the ink swirling around, swimming around on the surface of the bubble. Sometimes it'll pop, uh, but you have to get skilled and know when it's gonna pop to uh, prevent too much accident. And you place as best you can onto the substrate, the bubble, and instantly you get a three-dimensional impression. And this is because, this is because the um, ink is spread around the bubble through centripetal force, through uh, forces of surface tension, and, and the, the heavier, denser ink comes to flow down and center at the bottom of the bubble, creating a kind of a gradated uh, density of ink. And so when it hits, you get this effect. Um, I've learned to stretch bubbles and to burst bubbles uh, prematurely or purposely over the area to uh, stretch and squash and make perfect circles at times. And now these examples are coming from um, the folders where they're kept. What's really fabulous is all of the suggested imagery that's random. And um, there's, there's no uh, predicting what may turn up. It's a lot like looking at clouds. You look at clouds and uh, you see images and they tell stories sometimes. Sometimes they're comical, sometimes they're majestic. Um, with this ink bubble stuff, it's usually, it's usually majestic. Um, what is this? We're out of focus. Get in focus there. There you go. I'm beginning to learn how to use um, my tablet. I'm just very surprised that it's even possible to go on YouTube with a tablet alone. This is what I've got is a Samsung Galaxy 2 tab. And um, with it, I'm able to make this video. Now, this business here is an, uh, an encaustic uh, drawing. And uh, I'm using it underneath. I can talk about encaustics at another time. I have made, oh, maybe a hundred large encaustic scraped wax paintings. I call them scraped wax encaustics. And uh, it's also a very satisfying type of experience. Oh, the background uh, uh, music that you hear uh, here today, by the way, is um, from Ambient TV. I'm watching Jellies is on TV here. And... Um, you know, Ambient TV should have something for me, and perhaps you, and many other artists. Uh, our art should be up there too, if it's new and fresh. This should be up there, my bounded space drawing should be up there, and modern music should be there. Just a little something for us artists. They just, they just don't think enough for us, do they? Um, this is a sort of a minimal expression, and um, so, what did I, what did I do here? I'm talking to myself. Oh yeah. Okay. So 
This all started back in 2002. Look at this. I actually, I paid a guy like $100 and he made this computer disc. Technology's kind of like, was outdated at the time. Sent it there to the uh, copyright department. So they've got some crazy floppy disc with images of my ink bubbles here. Uh, ink bubble fossils of the Sopocene era. That's what this says there. So I tried to own this, right? I want books, I want posters. At one point, there was a guy um, here in town named Hamilton who had the Canvas Company. And he made a great big, uh, I think it's four foot by five foot uh, canvas of just one of these blown up. And the fabulous property of ink bubble art, if it's done well, is that there's a minutia of detail. So these really blow up well. New things come into focus that you had no idea was there. And um, so uh, that's something I wanted to share as an, as an idea. I also found uh, ways to manipulate digitally these ink bubbles. And you'll find on my page at Robert Mori 123 examples of this. And also, um, it's the negative image of these ink bubbles paintings that I think have the most appeal, more so than what you're seeing here. The negative of this image is, is more satisfying to me than, than this positive image. And you'll find a lot of them, examples of those, on at Robert Mori 123 my Facebook page. So I've done a lot of experimenting. As I said, there's like 5,000 examples and uh, maybe 50 on architectural drawing board, 20 by 30 inch. And here is uh, one example of um, using a, a mask and, uh, and using, making the ink bubble, blowing the ink bubble drawing. Uh, so, you know, I had some pinking shears there I cut out a circle and with my pinking shears, I gave it the edge and laid that over top of the painting um, and, and created that effect you see there. It's very messy. It's, a, it's very messy. You'll, you'll ruin your clothes. You'll ruin your rug. You'll ruin your tablecloth. You've got to um, take care uh, before you begin or you'll be sorry. Um, I made most of these back when I was living on Frankfurt Avenue uh, between, say, 2000 and 2007. Um, and then I made a good many more at the Lofts of Broadway, the big ones I made at the Lofts of Broadway. Um, I showed some of these at my little store at uh, Melwood's Art Center back in 2009, I think it was. And um, I had a big uh, reaction, a good reaction from the people that would come by my little room and actually blew bubbles uh, before a, a live audience. I don't think ever made a recording. Um, the, uh, the, the, the opportunity to make a film of the execution of these bubbles would be uh, satisfying and I think maybe successful if if, look at the, look how look at the round bubbles. Look how uh, crisp they are. If you didn't have a clue as to how this was done at all, you you might think this was chiaroscuro, some pencil, uh, lead pencil, and it took hours and hours. But no, um, it took 15 minutes to make the entire thing there, and um, instantly you see an image when the bubble leaves the uh, tube. And um, it, there is the matter of it's drying. Now they take 15 to 20 minutes to dry. And that is perhaps the most difficult part of a production of ink bubbles. Uh, because you've got to, um, you got to let them dry and they're going to smear. And if you want to be speedy, uh, you can get reckless and a lot of uh, mishaps can result. 
But I was very careful. I had all the time in the world, and I, and I took my time and, and executed thousands of these, these works of art. And, and I, I, I've tried every conceivable permutation of action to create different effects. And I refined my recipe for the ink, soap, and oil, or ink and water. Um, also, I have like uh, a, well, I used many different tubes. Uh, some uh, like from the, um, from a vacuum sweeper, that kind of uh, tube with all of the uh, folds in it and stuff, the bendable tube. You might find it on a drinking bottle, this type thing. And um, develop techniques of dipping and blowing. You have to hold your breath. Intonation is very important. Um, you want to speak to the bubble. I tried to convince the, the, the mix, the bubbles, of things that were in my spirit, in my heart, and find some deep expression. Uh, it usually worked. So... Each one of these is kind of like a world, and it's just uh, very satisfying. You can spend hours looking at this if you've got hours to spend. People with loads of hours, potheads, <laughs> you know, people like that. A potheads, this is a potheads dream come true. Uh, they ought to just, you know, lay back and spend their afternoon gazing upon this sort of thing for whatever. Uh, information it might have to impart to them. Um, there, there are a lot of sexual um, suggestions to me. Uh, I've looked these images over. I see um, a bosom there. Often I see uh, vaginas and uh, phalluses, um, things like that. Uh, what can you do? There's, there's nothing you can do. Uh, this is perhaps a, an anus, right? Anus, right? Sure. Uh, it, it's, it's inescapable. Um, it's natural. This might have been much more interesting if I would just shut up and put them down there. A little music in the background. One idea occurred to me, and I haven't done it justice, but I've got some examples, and some of them are quite good, of cartooning with ink bubbles. You blow what you hope is going to be a body, and it's usually an insect, and then you draw, you know, tentacles and arms and antenna, I mean, not tentacles. And uh, some examples of this may be found at Robert Morey 123. There are many, many albums in there. Um, Uh, embryonic, maybe. You might want to listen or watch this without my speaking. So watch it again if you're enjoying these images. Just take my voice out of the equation.
Now this one, maybe I'll leave you with this one. Now there's a guy I've been upstaged. I should add this. Now I didn't actually think of this idea, but I was on the on the hunt for this idea, and I had tried something like this with red ink, and um, it was neat, but it wasn't satisfying. And then I read an article um, called "When Bubbles Burst" uh, in 2002, Art in America. I forget the the month, but um, it was about a guy named Roland Flexner. He's very famous as an artist and he had made 36 I think it was index card size works of ink bubble abstract art I saw it and and I read the article when bubbles burst and I had never heard anyone an artist praised more highly than this artist was praised in that article and I said you know I've got to get some of that so I went and, you know, I made 5,000 pictures like this and more um, and developed my own style. No one, there's no book you can go to to learn how to do this. Or if there is, I don't know about it. And it will be a technique that is not mine. I invented my own technique. I think Roland worked on, on um, rice paper besides his index cards. And uh, my substrate is 40 pound cardstock. I feel it's the best uh, for dealing with the problem of saturation. Anyway, uh, so uh, this guy, I started to tell you, uh, uh, the owner of the canvas company, uh, Mr. Hamilton, uh, looked like we were going to go in business. He made this big production piece for me, gave it to me. I had a little show at... Uh, um, a gallery on um, stills <clears throat> uh, and he saw it there and, and uh, but it didn't he didn't uh, follow through we, we could have been should have been you know in, in all your uh, motels hotels uh, doctors offices we could have gone nationwide and we still can if you're enterprising person out there and you're looking at my art and you're thinking about these things, you know, well, hit me up, G give me a, a call, tell me uh, uh, you'd like to be uh, a part of it. I don't have uh, financing. I can barely get by month to month. I'm selling lamps and uh, buying and selling things to, to make ends meet here. I've got this small uh, inheritance in a a trust that's very restrictive. They won't let me have at it. Um, I've been treated like a child my entire life. I was drug raped and made semi an idiot and my whole family are criminally involved. They were never prosecuted. It's, it's been a railroading and it's a terrible political uh, situation and it's despicable. It's the meanest story in the history of the world, my life story. It really is mean. I, uh, I should have been very famous and successful uh, and, and the total story is, uh, will blow your mind, uh, and uh, it even involves the supernatural. It's, it's, uh, it's reached everywhere. Now, I'm going to let you go uh, in, you know, 20, 30 seconds when we reach, reach 20 minutes. And um, I hope you've enjoyed what you're looking at here. And as I said, there is more to see and also colorized versions on my page at Robert Morey123. So, Robert Morey, over and out. Thank you all for your time. Don't forget to contribute. <laughs> <laughs>